Good morning, Crossy Crown. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. Let's go ahead and have a seat for a couple of minutes of announcements. First of all, welcome back to our ready. Yay! It was back for two months in Africa. We're so happy that you're back joining our congregation again after your long rest with your family in Africa. So yay, we're so excited. Um, today we are continuing on with our summer preaching series on women of the Bible. Today is the last day where we will be talking about a woman of the Old Testament. Her name is Huldah, and she's very important in the Old Testament. She's a prophet, but she's not talked about much. There's only nine verses in the whole Bible dedicated to this woman. So we don't lift her up in our sermons very much, but I want you to listen closely to what she is all about today. So listen as Cheryl does the reading uh, about her. Um, then we will be moving, starting next week, to women of the New Testament. So we're doing approximately half Old Testament women, approximately half new, and I think you're going to get a lot out of the weeks coming up as well. Today we are having a Bible study. As I told all the Bible study folks, we have to be very flexible over the summer because we had a lot of other things going on some Sundays. But today we will meet for Bible study um, in the fellowship hall, so please should be sure to join us there. But before you go to Bible study... Here's what I'd like to request of you. If you were not available to vote on those papers at Terry and Sylvia's house last Sunday, we gathered for a potluck. Most of us were able to make it, but some were not. And we voted on three different things. One is um, your spiritual experience that stands out to you. Secondly, how has the congregation contributed to your life? And then third, where do you see God moving us into the future? So we interviewed you folks and asked for your answers to these things. We compiled all the data. We put them on all these three huge papers. And now we're asking you to vote on these things. So you might vote on the one that you said in the interview, but maybe something else stands out. So here's how to do this. When worship concludes, please head out that way, grab a cup of coffee, say hi to your friends, and then make your way into the hallway, the hallway that goes to the kitchen. There's a basket there on a cart where you will find stickers. If you pick up one of these things, there are three stickers, one for each of those papers. Take stickers and then put them by the things you want to vote for the most, the things that you relate to or that resonate with you. You'll see ones with the dots next to them, so I think you'll see what we mean. If you have questions, ask me, ask Sylvia, ask Jerry. We know about this, actually ask most of us because most of us were there. So uh, we can help you through that if you have uh, questions. Wednesday, we are doing our last summer movie night. We've been meeting over the summer with potlucks and movies, and we take turns choosing movies. So we have chosen The Matrix, because Jerry loves The Matrix. So, <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. If you want to come out, we don't really have a theme for this potluck, so just bring whatever you want. It's our final potluck for, uh, for our summer movie nights. Bring whatever you want. We always have a wonderful spread of food. Um, if you don't like to cook, no big deal. Pick something up at the store. It's not a, you don't have to like do from scratch homemade stuff like Kim does, you know. But <laughs> hey, we each have our gift of the spirit. Maybe that's not your gift. So anyway, we always have a really good time. Um, the Matrix, however, Eric just reminded me, is rated R, just so you know. So it's not an appropriate movie for young children. Um, but anyway, we have a really good time. Come on out to that. Movies at six, dinners or dinners at six. Movie starts at seven o'clock. Um, we do need assistants and readers and all kinds of people helping with worship. Um, you might notice the assisting minister is the person like Brent is assisting today. Thank you, Brent. Um, we have readers. You know what that is? Reading the gospel or the uh, before the gospel, usually the Old Testament reading here. Uh, we need people helping with altar care. That's setting up for communion. Um, we need people helping with ushering. So if you would be willing to sign up for one of these things or an audiovisual room over there, we will do all the training. So you don't need to know how to do this by hand. We will show you and walk you through it. But we do need sign-ups. That uh, clipboard for that is out there uh, in the narthex. Um, we also have a, a member of our congregation. Uh, she's elderly, and she needs occasional rides to church. So if you might be willing to pick her up and come to church, some Sundays. She lives about 10 minutes from here, so it's not very difficult to pick her up. Um, but just please let me know, and then uh, we can arrange that. I can give you her phone number. She has a gauge code, and so you need to know that as well. So just let me know if you would be willing to help with that. We really want people to be able to come here, and she can't always make it, so that would be great. Uh, lastly, I am going to be on vacation starting this Friday. Um, I will be here at the office through the week, but then this Friday, and then the next 
three weeks I will be gone. Two weeks of vacation and then one week of continuing education. So I will be out of the office for three weeks. If you need emergency pastoral care, please call the office and get a hold of Terry. Or if you can't because she comes in and out and she might not pick up her phone right away or email her, then please contact any council member. I will give the council members the information for the pastor that's available on standby if you need emergency pastoral care. Now, the likelihood of that is small, but you just never know, life happens. Meanwhile, you are so fortunate that you get to have your very own Brent Tuamanen preaching for the next three weeks. He's a, I know, I know, yeah, you're really lucky. We are very fortunate that he able, he's able to do this, man of many talents that you are. Um, and he's a really, really good preacher. And he decided to stay with the series of women in the Bible. So you get to hear about some of the women in the Bible from a male's perspective, which is fantastic. You need to, I mean, the, the many voices, the better. So um, Pastor Robert from the Indonesian congregation, I'm sure you remember him. He's been in here a couple times before. He is going to be here in two weeks to preside, meaning to preside over the Holy Communion table. Branch will still be preaching, but he, he's coming in just so that people can receive communion in two weeks. So anyway, you've got really good coverage, and we're very fortunate, so thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. Any other questions, announcements, comments? Jerry, yes. Just um, after church, real quick, I want to just all members gather together just to give you an update. Because remember, we voted that we could use from the savings to pay benefits and everything. So I just want to give you an update where we're at, you know, um, and all that. So that's right after church. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So it'll be after this service here, so before you go grab your coffee, just a quick update. Thank you very much for doing that. Yes, Mary? Uh, <clears throat> we are collecting backpacks for the local school here in Etiwanda School District. It's a K, pre-K through 8th grade school district, so that one kid, and they want uh, pencils, uh, crayons for the younger ones and colored pencils uh, for the older children and any kind of backpacks, any kind of thing, uh, they can use them all. So if you bring those, uh, school starts here August 8th. So they would like some at least before school starts. I happen to have two at home that I've got to get. <laughs> so it, uh, but uh, if you will bring those, and I will just leave them outside. I'll try to find a big box to put them in. So, uh, Thank you, Mary. That. And uh, on God Hands Our Sunday. God's Work Our Hands. God Work. I know, it's a lot. God's Work Our Hands Sunday. Yeah. 9-11. We're go nine, on 9-11 this year. We're going to be making little packets to give to homeless people with water, uh, wow. granola bars, uh, little cans of... Those Vienna sausages or uh, fruit cups. Uh, they want eight ounce water bottles, not the big ones, but the little ones. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll put that all together on 9 11. Perfect. Office. Thank you. Yes, please save the date. And I do have one other announcement that just occurred to me. That's half of why I asked you if you have other announcements so I can think about it while you're talking and remember other announcements. Um, save the date, please. August 27th. We have a field trip coming up, a congregation field trip, for you, for your friends and family, whoever wants to go to California Science Center in Los Angeles. They have an exhibit there on Angkor Wat, which is the largest religious site in the whole world. It's in Cambodia. Angkor Wat, this temple and its site, is four times larger than Vatican City. It is huge. And it was built in the 1100s. It was first a Hindu temple, then it switched over to a Buddhist temple. Um, some of it went into ruin during the Khmer Rouge uh, ruling of Cambodia, but now it is being restored. And many of its artifacts uh, are, I think a couple hundred actually, artifacts are coming to Los Angeles. It is an incredible chance for us to go see artifacts from this temple. Then before that actually, there's an IMAX movie that we get to see, a 45 minute IMAX movie, you know those huge screens? which explains Angkor Wat and explains what we're going to be seeing in the museum. So all together, the cost is approximately $20 per person. It ranges from, I think, 22 to 17. There's like a senior discount, child discount, et cetera, um, if we get a group of 15 together. 
So invite your friends and family. Kristen Scott, who's not here today, she will be heading up that and probably be talking more about that and there will be a sign up sheet when I'm gone. But I'm not gonna be back here and see you until about the August 21st. So anyway, save the date if you wanna go, it's gonna be really fun. That's in lieu of our Crossing Crown Presents event, which we're having generally every month, which I need to thank you again for, Terry. Those of us that came out and heard Terry yesterday, it was such a fascinating conversation of the Deep Space Network, right? Would you agree? I mean, a lot of you came out. Yeah, it was really, really great. Next month, we get to hear, no, next month we're going to California Science Center. Month after that, we get to hear from my husband of almost 30 years, Eric, um, who's back in the back, quiet. He, <laughs> he is a quiet genius of a man, I have to say. Not that I'm incredibly objective about him, but anyway, um, he loves philosophy and theology. He also loves movies. So he is going to do a presentation in September on finding God in Harry Potter. It's going to be super fun. Then I've just heard that Nicole is going to be leading our October Crossing Crown Presents, leading us all in an art project. So that's going to be super fun as well. So thank you for signing up for those things. I, I encourage you to come out to those. We have a really good time. Yes. Any other announcements? Yes. Yes, thank you. I'd love to thank everybody who came out yesterday. Quite a bit was accomplished. Leadership on my part, but thank you. That was great. Yeah. Uh, also, for August, since it is vacation, we're going to change the work day from the third Saturday to the second. Nice. So, but there won't be uh, the August 13th. Oh, August 13th. Okay. Yeah, okay. better put that down. Good. Yes, save the date, August 13th, work day. Uh, but there won't be any presents. We'll just get in here, get to work. Get out and then people can go on vacation. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, with all those announcements, see how hopping we are. We are an active, busy place. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a minute and share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you.
steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Please join me as we pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. And it will not be any more than we either desire or deserve. Pour on us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience. And give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for our reading. Then the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam, son of Sipan, Abdon, son of Micah, the secretary Sipan, and the king's servant, Asia, go inspire the Lord for me, for those who left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that has been found. For the wrath of the Lord that is poured onto us as great, because our ancestors did not keep the word of the Lord, to act in accordance with all that is written in this book. So Hokiah and those whom the king had sent went to the prophet Hulda, the wife of Shalom, son of Tokah, son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe, who lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and spoke to her to that effect. She declared them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man who saved you to me. Thus says the Lord, I will indeed bring disaster upon this place and upon its inhabitants. All the curses that are written in the book that was found before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me, and have made offerings to other gods, so that they have provoked me to anger with all the words, works of their hands. My wrath will be poured out 
on this place that will not be quenched. But as king of Judah, who, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was pent penitent, and you humbled yourself before God, when God heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and you have humbled yourself before me, and torn your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, says the Lord. I will gather you to your ancestors, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. Your inhabitants, they took the message back to the king, the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able to welcome our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's have the children come on up for a special children's message. Hi. Come on up. Have a seat. How are you all doing? Good to see you all. Titan, Kylie, Matthew, Joseph. Did I call your names right? All right. Four for four. And Miss Kylie has a birthday tomorrow. You're going to be big nine. Isn't that awesome? Well, I wanted to show you something special. Have you ever thought if there was a fire and I had to only take one thing out of my house, what's the most important thing? Or is that just me and my crazy mind thinking that? That's just me, apparently, and my crazy mind thinking that. Okay. So if I could only, if I had to leave and could only take one thing, this is what I would take. This right here. What is this? What do you think? It's a Bible, right? And, and if a fire burned this up, I would still be okay. I'd go out and get another. Actually, I have a lot of other Bibles. So it's not like this is the only Bible in the world. Y'all have a Bible? I hope you do. If you don't, come see me and I will get you one. It's really, really important that you have one. Oh, good, good. And some Bibles have pictures, and those are super cool. Some don't. And those are also cool for a different reason. And they come in different translations. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it was written first in Hebrew and in Greek. Those are two other languages, not English. But it was translated in English so we can read it. Now, the Bible talks about how there is a pearl of great price. The pearl of great price reminds me of the Bible. Something that's so important, like a pearl. You know what a pearl is? I'm wearing my pearl earrings to help me remember this. See the pearl? Now, the Bible says if a pearl, if a, if a pearl was buried in dirt, somebody should go and buy that piece of dirt, right? Even though it was dirty, because what's important is what's underneath the dirt, this pearl of great price. Now, people sometimes don't think that about the Bible. They don't really respect this. They think, oh, it's a book. We have millions of books. No big deal. Or they think, let's just read it once and then put it on the shelf. Like we read lots of other books. I don't like reading novels more than once. But this is different. This is a different kind of book. Have you ever heard the saying, you can't step in the same river twice? Ever heard that saying? Now, it seems like you can, right? You step in the river, you step out, you step back in the river. Why is it not the same river? What do you think? Why would people say to Joseph? I see a glimmer in your eyes that you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? What happens to the water in that river? It flows. So if I'm looking at a river, and then I turn around, and then I look back, am I looking at the same water? No, because the water is already flowing down. I'm looking at different water, right? So that's what they mean. You cannot step in the same river twice, because when you step in again, it'll be different water. Does that make sense? You can't read the same Bible twice. Every time you read it, you're going to get, I promise, something different out of it. It's going to be new. God uses this to speak to you. It's like how you pick up a phone and you talk to a friend. This is your phone to talk to God. God speaks to you through this. Now, do we worship this? No. Is this God? No. Nothing's God but God. We do not worship the Bible. That's called idolatry. Only God is worthy of worship. But this is how we know God. And this is different in, than other books in other ways, too. 
what am I doing in this book? What do you see all over the book? You see my writing all over the book? Yeah, you, you highlight, you can write in the book. It's even wet, because sometimes I take it into like the bathtub and read it, and like, you know, the swimming pool. You gotta be careful not to drop it in. But do you see all the writing all over this? You see all the highlighting all over this? So you probably hear in school, don't write in books, right? Hopefully you don't, hopefully you don't mess up books, but this is how the Bible is different. Please write in this one. Check it out with your parents. <laughs> but that's your pastor's advice. Write in it, underline, circle things, make notes, say what's important to you. This is how God is communicating with you and talking to you. Sometimes people say, Pastor, I'm not hearing from God these days. Like I'm praying, but like nothing's coming back. And my first question is, you're reading your Bible? Because what if you pick up the phone and all you do is talk, but you don't listen? Are you going to hear on the other end what the person's saying? No. And this is how you hear from God. Now, one last example. When you go to the dentist, the dentist sometimes gives you one of these. Titan, what's this? Good. I'm really glad that this looks familiar to you. Yeah. <laughs> toothbrush. Have you ever been to the dentist and they give you a toothbrush? Sometimes they even give you one of this. What's that, Kylie? Toothpaste. So you, you pretty much know what these are, right? Do you have your own toothbrush? Do you have your own toothpaste? All right, good. Do you brush your teeth every single day? Now, my dentist used to say to me when I was a kid, brush your teeth every day, and I would say, well, I don't feel like brushing my teeth every day. And he'd go, I don't care if you don't feel like it. Do it. Why? What would happen if I didn't? What would happen if you didn't? Yes, exactly. You get cavities, your teeth would, yeah, get rotten like that, right? Cavities, you'd have to get a bunch of fillings. Now, is the dentist going to go to your house and follow you around and watch you and make sure you do this every day? Of course not. So do you have to brush your teeth every day? No. But your teeth will get bad. What if some people need medication every day? Now you might not, some people don't, but some people do, and they need to take it every day. And if the doctor said, you need to take this every day, what if you said to the doctor, I don't want to take it every day? How about I take it only once a week, all seven pills for that week, once a week? Or how about if I wait till 30 days is up and at the end of the month I take all 30 pills at once? No, the doctor would be like, um, listen to my instructions every single day, right? Just a little pill, not a huge pill, a little one every day. Brush your teeth, not for an hour, five minutes every day. In fact, more than once a day, right? Okay, your pastor's telling you this, listen. Read the Bible a little bit, like a vitamin, not a big lot, a little bit, every single day. And you're going to say to me, every day? Every day. But I don't want to. Well, you don't have to. I'm not going to follow you around. I'm not going to make sure you do it. If you skip a day, if you skip every day, God will still love you. So will I. Your pastor, by the way, always, forever. Your dentist will love you if you don't brush your teeth, but your dentist wants your teeth to be healthy and well, and I want your spirit to be healthy and well. So I'm telling you, we need this. We need this like we need brushing our teeth. We're not healthy without it. This is how God guides us, loves us, lets us know what's up every day. So, do y'all have a Bible? You got, you got to have one of your, good, you got, you can read it on your phone. What a high-tech kid you are. I've never, that's the first time I've ever heard that. That's very, very cool. Yeah, today we are able to read the Bible on our phones and tablets and all kinds of things. The best Bible is the one that you'll read, okay? Whether it's on your phone, whether it has pictures, whether it doesn't, whether it's this translation or that translation, the best one for you is the one you enjoy. My kids growing up, they had comic book Bibles, they had Lego Bibles, they had all kinds of things because they wanted something and I wanted for them to have something interesting. Read it, how many days out of the week, kids? Only on Sunday? High five, Kylie, every day. Long, long time? Just a little time. Little time. Every day. Every day? Yes. Every day, five minutes a day, that's it. That's all you need, but every day, okay? Because I care about your spiritual health and your well-being, just like your dentist cares about your teeth. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this Bible. It is such a gift. It is a pearl of great price. 
we take it for granted, we don't realize what we have in this thing, we put it on the shelf, it gets dusty. Please remind us how important these scriptures are. People have died for them to be in our hands today. Thank you for this great gift. Remind us every day, help us get in the habit, just like we brush our teeth, to read a little bit of the Bible every single day. Strengthen these children with their toothpaste, with their medicine and food and whatever else they need, and with your holy word. Strengthen them with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being up here, guys. Go on back now. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. Well, I received this Bible here that I was showing the kids. I received this from my grandparents that lived in Arkansas when I was 15. I was baptized when I was 15, and they sent this Bible out to me. It's not my first Bible. I had a couple others before that didn't mean a lot to me, but when I was baptized, and I, I really started to get what this story was all about, this became really important to me, and I took this uh, through my life with me. You know, I, I read this in high school, I read it in college, I took it into my marriage and birth of my children and through seminary and to now. And I read this every day. Do I forget a day? Sure. Do I skip a day? Of course. But generally, that's my habit. Like, it's my habit to brush my teeth every day. And, and those grandparents, they probably didn't even know how important it was. Uh, that they gave me this Bible and, and what it's done for me to lead me through my life. And I have another grandfather who I've told you about before. He was a convict and uh, sentenced to St. Quentin prison, so he did some things that weren't all that great. He had to go through a process of repentance and conversion, but he did go through that process. And when I was growing up, he told me, don't just read the Bible, study the Bible. Study it. Get your highlighter, get your marker, get your pen, take notes. Read commentaries about the Bible, watch videos about the Bible, and study this your whole life because you will keep getting more and more and more and more out of it. It's different than a Charles Dickens novel where you can read it once and pretty much get the story. If this was easy, we would put it on a shelf and forget about it. It's complicated, it's intense, it's difficult. I want you to think back in your life. Where did you get your first Bible? Or where did you get your most meaningful Bible? Or what version of the Bible stands out to you the most? Do you have one from grandparents, parents, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher? Do you have one that is particularly important to you? Do you have a favorite version? Do you like to read it on your phone? Do you like to watch videos about the Bible? Where is it become important in your life? You know, the first translator of the Bible into English was burned at the stake for his crime of translating the Bible into our language. What a sacrifice to get this into our hands, and may we never take this for granted. Well, today we read a story about this woman, Huldah. So she's in the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament, of course, is the Jewish Bible before it's a Christian Bible. We Christians call it the Old Testament, but the Jews call this the Tanakh, or the Hebrew Bible. And approximately a third of this is a section called the Prophets. And it's all those books highlighting all the great prophets of Israel. And in the Prophets, in this section, only two women are spoken of. Deborah, that we talked about last week, and Huldah. Huldah, in nine verses. We have that picture up. That's okay. Olda, um, she was known, thank you, <laughs> she was known for verifying that a book of the law was in fact scripture. So a little backstory: King Solomon's temple was undergoing some renovation before we enter the text. And in King Solomon's temple, a book of the law was found. You heard Cheryl mention that. So, the king wanted to know if this was legitimate scripture, if this was holy, sacred text. So, the king sent some people to go find Huldah, a prophet, and ask her, is this book of the law legitimate? She then was the first person in all of scripture 
to verify and authenticate scripture. There we are. All right, hold up. The true photographs, really, you know, the camera's back. <laughs> Just kidding. So she was the first person to say, yes, this is scripture. She lifted up the importance of scripture, and she told the king and all these priests that came to see her, take the scripture seriously. Take God's law seriously. Well, today I want to talk about this scripture that Huldah was the first to lift up and say, take seriously. This Bible, really, it's not one book. This is a library of books written from thousands of years ago till now, first passed down through the oral tradition, through storytelling, as most indigenous cultures do. They tell stories, pass them down from grandparents to grandchildren. Eventually, it was written down, and it formed what's known as the canon. The canon means that there are no books that are going to be taken out of the Bible or added to the Bible. The Hebrew canon for the Old Testament, what we would call the Old Testament, that canon was formed between 200 BC and 200 AD. During those 400 years approximately, the canon of the Hebrew Bible was formed and the canon was closed. And then Christian scriptures came along. Christian scriptures were closed in the 300s. Now there was a debate, even in the 300s, between St. Jerome and St. Augustine of which scriptures were really truly legitimate scriptures. So later on, during the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, that debate reopened between St. Jerome, the most famous biblical scholar, and St. Augustine, the most famous theologian. That debate reopened, and that's why we have a little bit of a difference between a Catholic and a Protestant Bible. So the canon has been closed. There will never be any books added. There will never be any books removed. Which is great because we don't want to pick and choose and say some things are not worthy of reading because they're too hard or too complicated. We'd rather challenge ourselves and really struggle with how to understand scripture, even its most complicated parts. Now the interesting thing is that Luther really wanted this in the people's hands. In Luther's day, the Bible was not given to everybody. In fact, it was illegal for people to own a copy of the Bible. Even the priests were only allowed the scripture on which they were to be preaching. They were not allowed an entire Bible in their hands. It was literally against the law. So Martin Luther was able to read the Bible, not so much because he was a priest, but because he was a scholar. And so he read the Bible in Hebrew and Greek and in Latin, and then he translated it when he went into hiding into his native language of German. He was the first to get this out. The printing press had just been invented, which was a really high-tech, new technology at the time. And so it was then possible to get the Bible into people's hands. And then, like wildfire, the Protestant Reformation, including the dissemination of the Bible, couldn't be stopped. And since then, this Bible has gotten into people's hands all over the world. And people have sacrificed their lives to get it into people's hands in remote corners, including in places where it's illegal, like in some communist countries. It is that pearl of great price. Now, Luther said, we do not worship this. We respect it. One of the ways my grandfather always told me to remember how to respect this is to never put something on top of it. That's kind of superstitious. I mean, it's not like it's gonna not breathe or something, but to this day, I don't put anything on top of my Bible. I don't put a coffee cup or other books. Even in my office where I have Bibles, the Bibles are on the top of my stack of books. They're never going to be on the bottom, just out of respect. But I do write all over my Bible. So it's a different way of respecting a book than not writing it. You want to use this thing. You want it to be dog-eared. You want it to be worn. You want it to be used. This is like a phone. You talk to God with it. It's like a phone that you have. You don't want a phone just sitting there. You want to pick it up and dial a friend. Dial God, pick it up, hear what he has to tell you on a daily basis, like I told the children. Now Luther called the Bible the cradle of Christ. It is not Christ, but it is the cradle of Christ where we come and encounter Christ. My pastor, when I was a teenager, used to talk about how the Bible is a window through which we see God on the other side. Beautiful. It is that window. We become enlightened 
when we read this every day, and the Spirit of God flows to you through this living word. Now, the interesting thing is that we know that in the beginning, the word existed. The word, which goes beyond these words, the word of God was there in the beginning. And God, we see in Genesis, spoke the world into being. God did not create the universe from Plato, from Legos, from sand, but from voice. God spoke the world into being. That's how sacred the word of God is. And then we hear in John that Jesus is God's very word. Jesus is the word of God. So when you come to church, you encounter God through words, through the scripture being read, through preaching, through the lyrics that you're singing, through prayers, but you don't just encounter all the words, you encounter the word, Jesus, Christ, God's living word. Fascinatingly, we not only encounter God through the word, but the word then is a gift to us, for us to use. Now, truly, like we said earlier, the battle belongs to God, right? At the same time, sometimes we can feel like we face a battle every day, or at least some days. Sometimes there's a battle in our own mind. Sometimes we feel weighed down by the negativity of this world. We might hear a lot of the news and what's going on in the world. Sometimes even our own friends or on social media or our own worries and fears and sadness and anger. Sometimes we can feel like we're in our own private battle in our own minds. Truly, the battle does belong to God, though. And here's how we can play our part in that battle. You don't battle negative thoughts by other thoughts. You don't battle dis disabling thoughts or, or thoughts that seem to pull us down by having better thoughts. They're not strong enough. You battle negative, dark, difficult, lying thoughts by words. Words are stronger than thoughts. Speak to the darkness and the darkness disappears. And the words that are the best to use are found in here. Speak the words that you are more than a conqueror through Christ who created you. Speak the words that you can do all things through faith in Christ. Speak the words that you can move the mountain from there to there by your faith. Speak the words of Peter to Jesus. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You speak those words, you fight your battle, and you will win. Because no darkness can overcome the power of God. And your tool for that battle is words, not thoughts. They're not strong enough. Words. These ones. Learn them. Memorize them. Some of them. Underline your favorites. Write them on post-it notes. Put them on a mirror, on your refrigerator, in your car, on your steering wheel, in your appointment book, on your phone. Put empowering words from here that will win those battles. I'm telling you. These words are infinitely stronger than your most disabling thoughts than your fears, than your worries, than your anger, than your sadness, than your despair. M much stronger than the cynicism on social media, than the difficult situations on the news. You need these words. And they're right here for you at your taking. In the Western Hemisphere, the Western religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all value the word, which stands out very differently than the religions of the East. The religions of the East are all beautiful and good and have their own things that they value, but in the Eastern Hemisphere, stereotypically, as a general rule, what's valued is silence, quieting the mind, stopping all the words. And there's a point to that. So you see in the East Asian religions of Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, Taoism, lots of meditations and, and ways to quiet the mind and stop all the words. There's a place for that. However, there's also a place as the Western religions lift up the importance of words. First, God's words. Secondly, scriptural words. And third, your words. 
They're given to you as a gift to use. Your tongue is the most powerful weapon you have. Use it, and use it daily. I'm going to issue you a challenge for the month of August. I'm going to be on vacation celebrating my anniversary with my husband. And so, of course, I'm not going to be here preaching and sharing the word, and I will miss that. I love that, and I love you guys, and I love being immersed in the word every week as I think up sermons, and Brent gets to have that fun now. But I issue you a challenge, but we're not going to have Bible study, and that is the August Daily Bible Challenge. It's also written about in the newsletter that's going to come in your email, so you can see that there. Here's the challenge. Every day in August, get a calendar, mark it off that you do this every day. Pastor, do you mean every day? I mean every day. Let me underline every, every day. Like your dentist will tell you to brush your teeth. Every day. You can do this for 30 days. Every day. In the morning, first thing, read a little bit of the Bible. I like to read one psalm. That's it, one. You don't have to sit down for four hours and read. You don't have to sit down for one hour and read. Five minutes. One little part of the Bible, either a psalm or maybe one chapter in one of the Gospels. Just a little bit, but every day. Then read it over a second time and underline in your Bible one sentence from that one little part. So say if you read a psalm and you pick out verse number five, Underline that one sentence, or maybe just one phrase. And then, choose either an index card or a post-it note, and write down your one sentence. And post it somewhere where you will see it all day long. Or, if it's on here, put it in your pocket, carry it around with you. And look at it all day long. Whatever sentence stands out to you, trust God, he's trying to talk to you. Look at that verse all day long as much as you can. Let it pour love, wisdom, guidance, power, and peace into you, which is what it will do. And your life will be transformed. I cannot overestimate what God can do with the word. When I get back from vacation, tell me, it'll be three weeks later, tell me how God has used the word and transformed your life even in three weeks. I'm telling you, I promise, you will be amazed. This is a lifetime of joy we get to have, speaking directly with the God of the universe, who knows your name, who knows what concerns you, who cares about your life much more than you do. And you will be able to see that God has a direct, daily relationship with you and wants to give you the very best. I hope you all take up this August daily Bible challenge. I do it every day. I cannot imagine not living like this. But just try it. Try it for one month. And then please come up and tell me what this does for you. It's going to be really cool. I'm very excited for you. So may we all be like Hulda, focused on the word, confident in the word, and bravely speaking the word, knowing the kind of power it has for your life and for this world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing.
buried with Christ in baptism, and raised with him to new life. We give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we receive our offerings. Thine is the kingdom and 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come. This is the feast of our Lord, and all are welcome and invited. I invite you to have a seat for a moment, and you'll be released one row at a time.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace. Amen. Life giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now receive your blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life, this day and always. Amen. Amen.